And here it is. The 1.0 review, in my opinion. And kind of just a game review in general. Obviously, I mean, let's just talk about the bad things. I'm not going to make this too long. I'm just going to talk about like what I've found, uh, what I like, what I don't like. And yeah, I'll just go from there. So, the game had a shaky start, as we all know. Not great. We had, you know, crashes. The game not working. We've had, um, well, we still, we still do have gameplay issues like the camera. And we've had kind of like resource and time management issues in this game as well. Uh, with, it for example, to feel dreadful of the unknown. Yet there are times when the unknown harbors hope. For example, how I can never know what else this power. Breaking you like okay. For example, the premium tuners, or just Echo XP in general, right? People are running out. We have echoes, but we can't level them up. So that's that's kind of like about it. Uh, we're gonna go a little bit to the combat. Yeah, talk about the combat. Talk about exploration. Exploration is really good in this game. I kind of like the characters themselves. Um, other than that, and kind of like a little bit of end game stuff. I kind of like just gameplay game modes in general. So let's start with the bad, I suppose. So. Again, as I said, people have been having issues playing the game, performance issues, all of that. And it's not consistent, unfortunately. It just happens randomly, depending on what type of combination of um, a setup you have. Which, it's not great, but there it is. Uh, what else do we have? We have, so performance issues um, on PC. It's random, it seems like. Then we have... Um, Performance issues on mobile phones, which is not great. Basically, if you have like a below average phone, it's not really playable. <laughs> um, now, I have a Google Pixel 6 and it's working fine on like the lowest settings you can imagine. Um, because I mean, it's a phone game, that's what you should be playing on anyway. Uh, for, you know, a, um, what's, what's this thing used again? Like Unreal Engine, right? But, I mean, what can you expect? So we have that, then we have a uh, yeah, performance issue on phone, which I mean, a lot of people are kind of saying, basically, but 1.1, if it doesn't get resolved, then they're going to quit the game. So that sounds fantastic. For example, like um, things like this. So like stuff like this, right? People complaining about phone performance and rightfully so, because it kind of sucks. Unfortunately, like it doesn't seem like they're trying to fix it self awareness um, currently wisdom. well it's not that they're not trying to it's just like they're not fixing it basically and it's been a couple of weeks so so we have this type of issues right like mobile performance issues and um stuff like that we've even had things like this <laughs> like popping up kind of like memes like this um uh, you know people are saying even by like 1.1 if they don't basically fix the game it's over so, I mean, you know, it's kind of like do more posting-ish, kind of. Um, but for me personally, I haven't had any issues, so I can't, like, personally complain. Because, I mean, the game is just perfect. It's working on my phone, a Google Plus 6, which is just like a, what I don't know, like an average phone at this point. Robot. It's kind of old, like two or three years. And, you know, kind of mid as well, I think. I don't know. But yeah. So we have that kind of stuff. Which is great things. Then we have Echo XP. Well, let's just talk about Echoes in general, right? Because that's the whole issue. It's just the whole ecosystem. So, if I show this quickly. I have all the Echoes in the world that I would want. And I could go out and farm even more. That's great and all. That, you know, if you're like willing to spend more time, you can get an edge over casual players. But, if you don't spend money, you're kind of like at the same level as casual players anyway because you can't level anything up so if i go into a resonator thingy to their echoes let me show that's a bad one a little bad one i like this guy you see this xp right here it's not a lot it's yeah it's not a lot maybe that's gonna get one piece to 25 and that's about it um, so there's that issue, and then there's also the issue of tuners, right? Okay, 
hear me out. I know what I'm talking about, like, how we're running off the tuners. But I just completed the events that gave you tuners from the Alloy Smelt and the Story thingy that's happening. So, don't worry, this is going to run out. And I'm not going to get anything, trust. Because um, up until now, I haven't had anything. But, yeah, tuners are just so annoying. And the, So, that's kind of like the issue with the ecosystem. But then we come into the issue of the... Uh, like time management and resource management aspect of the game so right now level 40 at ul 40 you see here you know level 43 from the tested fields you only get 20 premium tuners something like that it doesn't say but it's something like, like 20 or 30 i don't know but for 60 wave plates only 30 tuners like that's kind of Yikes. Not great. I mean, what can you do, right? I suppose. Um, well, they need to fix it. I don't know. They need to give us more tuners. To be honest, kind of like the really easy fix that they could implement like any time, in my opinion, would be to have these things. I go back to the backpack. Uh, where are they? Here. To have the advanced tuners and the medium tuners be like upgradable into premium tuners right because like ah it's so annoying these premium tuners man but yeah so that's cool but yeah those tuners from the events they're gonna run out quickly so you can see we got like a bunch from the story event thingy then we get a bunch from the elusive realm but i've already uh, taken all of those where else do we get stuff that looks melt we got like I don't know, like 200 or something for the Alice, but that was pretty good. And this thing, we don't get anything. No tuners, fortunately. And that's about it. You don't get any tuners from anywhere else. So yeah, that kind of sucks. So we have that. And that's about it. They need to fix it. They're going to say 1.1. They're going to change some things around. They're going to give more... Uh, resources from the tested fields or something like that. I uh, don't remember exactly. So that's fine. Uh, we'll see what happens. But another issue that's happening like at this moment. Where's the 1.1 live stream? Like how do we know what's going to change? What's not going to change? How are we going to get hyped for the game, right? Like what are they going to say? Um, You know, it's just like so many questions around this game right now. Because it's kind of like... Yeah, they're hot fixing it. But... Nothing seems to have really, like, changed, necessarily, since the release of the game. So that's fine. Other than, like, performance issues, I guess. Um, so we'll have to see. But yeah. So that's another thing uh, with the Echo XP. Let's just get into the positives now. So, they've been having this many issues. But they've been giving us loads of free stuff. So that's pretty cool. They give us a free 5-star. Amazing. Um, you know... Loki hoping that if they keep having performance issues on phones and stuff, they keep giving us more things. Because for me, that's just free. Because I can't play the game. <laughs> so that's fine. This is like... Okay, wait, before we get to positives, this is like a personal... Um, like negative, kind of. I, I don't know if that makes sense. But yeah, kind of like a negative that happened only to me. Well, that... Basically, I go unlucky. So... On the Yilin banner... <laughs> I have spent 150 pools, as you can see. No. Over there. On the yielding banner. It was really annoying, because like, oh my god, it's literally just like max pity for everything. As you can see at the bottom here, the, there's like the uh, four star pity and all that, they're all red. You know, it's it hasn't been fun, uh, the whole gacha experience for this game so far. But hopefully we get lucky a little bit later on. But that's kind of just like a thing that happened to me only, right? Um, so that's amazing. But that brings me to another point. It's currently right now. Okay, well, I'm going to come back to that a little bit. But I'm going to talk about my asteroid count at the top. Which ain't looking too big. I'm not going to lie. So, but before we go into that, let's talk about exploration flag. Because this is going to be another easy topic to cover. So... <laughs> uh huh. Yep. Yep. Mhm. Mm 
and then let me show just look at the number numbers over there for all of these areas yep mm -hmm. yep 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 cool i mean i definitely gonna spend like too many hours exploring for the last chests on the map or anything but yes i have 100 percent the whole map the whole starting map anyway um so this version is really fun and it's kind of like it's really fun and it's also made easier because like for example i'm not surprised by genshin right um they don't really have well they do okay i'm changing shit, but like they don't really have kind of like obvious or like easy ways to like make the exploration easier like for example we have if you go to the pioneer association where you level up your pioneer level by exploring you see at the top it's 100 percent right but what we get is we get this loot mapper which they make it obvious to you that that exists i don't know genshin is just like there was the like chest finder thingy but it was like kind of weird to find it it wasn't like obvious but the loot mapper made it really easy that's all fine i reached like i don't know like 95 percent for every map before i had to use like a old chest guide type of thing right um so yeah that's really fun it's easy um and that's so there's that it's fun it's easy to be honest and there's another reason for why expression is like just the best uh basically uh choo -choo 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 -choo. which is this just holding w and shift and just going up i guess <laughs> so yeah movement in this game is amazing you know you have like the grappling hook all of that there's like the whole tech where you can do like free uh, a triple jump and all that they can get higher um there's also the thing with gian where he can do like a quadruple jump or something something like that but yeah it's just like really easy. it's just like oh let me go up to this mountain i can grab that oh there's a chest up on that wall thingy whatever that is oh, i can go get that no problem oh yeah let me just walk all the way to the edge of that thingy rock thingy there has to be something up there oh on top of this radar you know, you could just do that, but like, for example, in Genshin, I know, um, it's like, you know, painful. Because you have to do this thing every time. Like, you know what I mean? Like, like what is that? Um, so yeah. That kind of, that's really good, but it sucks for Genshin. Um, I think it's not that we're like talking a little bit about Genshin. It's kind of like killed Genshin for me, this game. I... I was thinking of going back to the, like, Dainsleaf quest or whatever, because, like, it's pretty hype and all that. But, <laughs> I just, I just don't have the time and I can't be asked. Um, maybe at some point in the future, maybe, like, when 5.0 comes up, but, like, right now, I don't know, man. Genshin is kind of, they need to do something. But, yeah, anyway. Explosion is really good. Uh, really fun. And the thing with the Explosion is that it's tied in with echo hunting. You know, if you want to hunt echoes, you're going to be going around the map. And it's just kind of like hand in hand because you're going to be going around the map killing all of these echoes but you're going to be finding chests be finding like shooting challenges be finding all of that now everything i've been saying it sounds perfect for exploration but there are other issues um for example there's it does get repetitive i am not gonna lie now i know uh, i'm just saying this because um you know maybe i've done it too quickly maybe i've been playing too much of this game maybe blah blah but it's always just like you know like oh shoot these targets hit these training dummies um i don't know open his chest do like the cube puzzle do like the light puzzle all of that which actually those two the cube and the light puzzles are really fun there were some hard ones that like come lacking so a couple of times um but yeah but to be honest by the end of like 100 percent every area it got kind of boring i'm like over it already um so hopefully in the new map in 1.1 in the mountain map they're gonna uh, release like some new type of puzzles that'll be pretty cool um so that's fine but exploring is really fun it's really easy just use the loot map around going around everywhere and you should get close to 100 percent um cool so that's exploration just you know the best all of that in combination with 
my yinling pools I was complaining about earlier. This brings me up to another point. I'm kind of like, I don't know how I should feel right now. So, as you can see at the top, I only have 10.7k asteroids. And I'm at like, I don't know, like 9pt or something, right? So, that many asteroids turns into 67 pools. Which, I mean... I mean, I guess it is what it is, because I got really unlucky, right? 150 pulls for one limited character, but like... I mean, shit. It's just like unlucky, I don't know. It's, it's, it's like half of me like being salty about, you know, going all the way up to 150 PT. And the other side of me is just... Uh, like... I don't know, it just... It just feels bad. <laughs> <laughs> like after all, all this exploration, after opening all, every single chest, doing all the flies, you know, all the like the extra challenges, plus like all the events that have happened so far, and this is all I have left, you know, from like the start of the game, 1.0, wow, you know, the big start, um, and I was only able to get one character, and my second character is not guaranteed, which I mean, it's fine, it's, you know, I got really unlucky, I just have to deal with it, but it's still just kind of like... Ugh, man, I really opened all the and put all the work in, and only I have 10k asteroid. Yikes. Not great. So, yeah, hopefully, for Jinxi and Changli, I win. Because that is easy, I just pull better, I guess. <laughs> oh, it's so annoying. Now, let's go into something more interesting. Okay, so what we have here, we have Tempest Memphis, the best hologram in the game. And. Kind of like, so the combat system, again, it's not like an elemental based system like in Genshin. It was supposed to, but then they changed it. Um, yeah, so we have that. Then there's... Um, so basically you just have to like brute force it. And just use like the counter element to the monster if you can. To the Tacit field, Tacit Discord. So yeah, if you can do that, then you're going to do damage basically. But the way... Instead of the elemental system, the way we do damage in this game is we have a forte bar, which is this thing at the bottom, in this blue bar, right? For example, for Janshin, it's blue, then for over it's pink, and for Verena, it's yellow, right? So when you fill that up, you can do like a special attack, right? So for example, Shadow Rovers power. is you hold left click for the heavy attack, the and then you begins. transform into like the scythe mode, which does more damage and has like huh. more special attacks. So that's that. That's pretty cool. So as you can see, whenever there's like that yellow circle. Okay, I'm like failing to parry right now. You see, so like that I just... Well, okay, that time wasn't parry, I just broke him. Um, because they have the broken bar at the top. You see the white bar at the top? That's kind of like... I don't know, if you can think of like Honkai Star, like when you break them. And they go into that state where you just like chill for a sec. And they take more damage and all that. So we have that. Then there's parrying and dodging. As you saw in that fight, I was like parrying. So parrying and dodging. Dodging, it's, you know, when they come at you, you press the dodge button and then you do like, you get invisibility frames. Um, so that's fine. But then there's parrying. The way parrying works is you have to have your character's animation interact with the enemy's animation so it's not just like oh press the button when the yellow circle like closes up it's not like that you have to hit them when the circle closes up so for example so that's um kind of makes it harder and easier for certain characters so for example for a rover she just does a slash and the slash needs to interact with the yellow circle right it's not when you click left click it's when the slash interacts with it, right? So you do have like, you know, a couple of milliseconds time off there. And then, you know, you have like Jan Jin, which some of her attacks, you know, can do take a while to charge up, as you can see, like the last one. And then for Verena, you can see they're kind of like AUV and further away from her. So if they're like not hitting uh, like the yellow circle, you know what I mean? If they're like hitting like behind them or something or like to the side of them, then it won't interact with the 
and it was animation and the parry won't go through so that's how that works <laughs> but yeah it's 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 really fun um the whole forte bar thing makes it really easy to understand to play to do all of that but then we have like um if i go to like a harder boss so i can like you know not kill him in like one shot um so there's that but then there's also a more interesting uh, interactions that you can have between characters. So now that I'm like at the boss, I can show you this a little bit. So we have the whole forte bar thingy, we have the dodging, the parrying, that's all fine. Nothing too crazy there. But what we do have is we have like animation cancels. So you saw there, after Rover all teals, I then switched to Jan Jin, but Rover was still on the field doing damage. You can see, you saw it there again, right? So that's kind of what we have, right? So if we have that, like and then I do the monkey, and then I switch. Leave it to me. Now I'm super dehydrated. No hesitation. Oh, well, you saw both of them were still on the field, so that's really cool. They can do like animation cancels like that. Luminous that's not bad. Energy. And so we have those. Um, but then there's also, like, more depth to those, like, can animation cancelling, right? So if I charge up my thing quickly, you see now, now Verena has that yellow circle around her, right? So what that means is that her intro skill is ready to be used, right? So whenever you use the intro skill, they do, like, some special attack, and they also give you a special bonus, right? Like, for example, Verena, she gives you, like, some more damage deepen in general right um which basically means more damage i'm gonna explain the whole like formula of like damage deepen and all that but yeah which basically means more damage so we have stuff like that for uh, intro skills and then for outro skills they also can give a certain bon bonuses or just do a bunch of damage right so we have that kind of thing so that's cool for both intro and outro skills now outro skills uh is when their circle is like flashing right um on the characters that means whenever you switch the character that i currently equipped they're also gonna do like some special move uh so that's fine or something like that i think if i'm not understand completely uh, i'm not exactly like too sweaty in this game so like i don't really know everything and understand how intro and outro skills work um but it's something like that you know when you switch characters they give you like a bonus they do some special attack something like that so that's cool there's a lot to think about it's really fast paced it's all great. Check out my hologram video. That was really cool. Combat is like perfect. 10 out of 10. You know, people are saying um, there may be like some latency issues, some things like that. But for me, I haven't really felt that. For me, I just feel like it's been mostly a skill issue. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Mostly a skill issue. Um, and there is is kind of like, fortunately, there's a boss that exists that flies around. <laughs> And goes all over the place. And what happens is the camera, even if you have it locked, if you don't have it locked, if you try anything, the camera's gonna get lost. And this guy's just gonna fly wherever he wants, and you're not gonna know where he hits you, what attack he's doing, what any of that. So that's fine. And to be honest, it's not just this guy, but this guy's like the biggest like abuser of that, I suppose. Let's see if I can try to get that One quickly. Of the sounds. I'm just low on fluids. Oh my god, are you serious? I need those no, this I'm as well, the grabbing attacks. Dehydrated. Which are really fun. But anyway, he has like some flying attacks where like he flies around and like does all that. 
and the camera just gets lost, unfortunately. Um, so yeah, that's unfortunate. It's annoying, but like it's manageable. It's not too bad. Uh, just have to keep track of them, I suppose, somehow. So that's fine. Uh, that's holograms. That's combat. And that's kind of like the camera issues, right? Because people are saying, yeah, there are camera issues, all of that. And, you know, on PC, thankfully, you have a mouse. We can, like, move around quickly. But, like, on phone, if the camera gets lost, you're kind of lost yourself as well. So, well, I know there's some pretty good, like, mobile gamers. And, all, and you can co connect, like, a controller to phones and stuff like that. Um, so that should be okay, I suppose. Now, I just remembered. Let's go back all the way to the performance issues, right? So... An annoying thing is that this game had... Where is it? At 120 FPS. In the betas. But now it's only at 60 FPS. Because they've had to deal with, you know, performance issues, all of that. So they've had to cap it. But hopefully they bring 120 FPS at some point soon. Uh, legally. Because currently you can do it, but, you know... You have to do some uh, naughty stuff, let's say. But yeah. You know, talking about performance, you can see everything's like on max and all that. So yeah, it's all good. And another thing that's kind of like really worrying with to do with like the reputation of Kuro games. So they said that the game is going to come out on PS5, but when the game came out, it didn't come out on PS5. So that just kind of like makes me wonder like, oh, how many things are they going to say that they're going to do, but then they're not going to do it, you know, type of thing. So that's fine. But thankfully, you know, Coral Games seems to be a developer that listens. I know that's the joke. Devs listened. Uh, you know that. So they've listened. They, you know, they give us all of these compensation rewards. Do all of that. So that's fine. Now, all that is good. Now, let's talk a little bit about, like, about the game modes and the gameplay that we currently have available to the game, right? So, you know, echo hunting. Fine, it's easy. You can do it with your eyes closed. Doesn't matter. Um, but then we have... Something like this, the Elusive Realm, which needs to be finished because it is currently not. It feels like it's like, I don't know, like 30-40% finished. Like, the missions, okay, that's cool, I guess. Nothing crazy there, they give you some asteroids. There's like this whole progression system. It's cool, but like it's uninspiring, you get attack, HP and like some hp and resets and stuff echo cooldown scale like okay sure you have the echo shop there's like nothing in here basically to like you know make it like special like wow oh wait i need really need to do this kind of thing um you know every character well every character that's playable which is only d6 um only has like two kind of beginning points that they can go with um, kind of like, you know, when Honkai Star is similar to the universe, you get to choose a different path. Every character gets to choose, like, two different ways to play, kind of, uh, at the beginning of each run. And so if I choose Yin Ling and go in, for example, I'll be able to show you that. That's why from, like, this first, like, woman thingy, you get the Echo, which is sick. And then you get this thingy, and then you get this. So these are kind of, like, the first buffs that you're able to pick up to kind of like shape the way you're going to be playing uh this round so there it is but as you can see it feels like it's not finished it's like so empty it's all of that the story for elusive realm i feel like it's not there i don't know if there is a story for elusive realm because like if there is it's not obvious because like yeah, I know that I don't pay attention to like, simulated universe stories from Hokkaido, Star but like at least they are like there. You get like a ball of text, and I don't remember that being the case here. I just remember you like at the beginning you get to like have a guy to show you how to play this game mode, and that's about it, something like that. But yeah, it's they need to finish that because right now it's like kind of like a roguelike game mode that's minimalist to say the least. So, yeah. You definitely need to finish that. And make it fun as well. Because if it's not going to be fun, then it's going to be a chore. And players hate that. Cool, so there's that game mode. Then we have the Tower of Adversity. Now, this is good. It's just like, you know, solid endgame. Nothing crazy. You know, the same thing in Genshin. 
But there is one thing that's kind of like annoying and like weird. So we've already had the first iteration of the tower and it reset and it's about to reset in six days again. But it's the same towers with the same buffs with the same enemies like kind of weird. So yeah, hopefully they come up with something and they don't have like just two cycles of the towers that are just the same. Because otherwise that's weird. Because yeah, the tower on the left is for Jian and the tower on the right is for Yin Lin. But like... Okay, sure. Can't you come up with something else that's interesting, exciting, anything? So, yeah. That's that tower, that tower of adversity, that's fine. And holograms, as I showed before. Now, holograms just kind of feel bad because... They are just like a one-time thing reward that you get and you know you can't wait to like out level it you can beat it easily like i think that's what i'm gonna do i think i'm gonna wait until the next uh, world level to get up to like level i don't know if you can get up to level 80 in the next level but yeah i'm just gonna wait until then level up and beat difficulty 5 easily because i'm a pussy like that cool so that's fine but yeah, it's just like they need to do something with this. And they also need to add every boss. Because right now it's only the four four bosses. Aix, Monkey, uh, Memphis, Thunder in Memphis. And the bird. In permanent Hedron or whatever it's called. Hedron. So, yeah, they, they need to do some more holograms. They're really fun. Engaging. Combat is fun. It's really hard. Again, check out my video that I made on holograms. That was a blast to make and to play and that kind of brings me to i suppose the conclusion of the review the 1.0 review right great so my conclusion <laughs> you know hate it or love it is that this game is not finished uh, which is like it just feels bad man like i said this on day one when the game came out when they had all the issues when the voice acting was bad when the story feels kind of mid I'm saying kinda, cause it's like in between mid and bad. Um, so we have that. Uh, the only thing that they did, they have, it's just like the skeleton of the combat. That's about it. And movement, I suppose, right? Which is tied to exploration. But then again, like, I did say the exploration was fun, but then the puzzles got boring. So if they keep introducing new maps with the same puzzles, that's dead. <laughs> uh, exploration is going to be dead at that point. If uh, they release the new map and it's going to be the same echoes, that's going to be dead because that doesn't give us more ways to farm echoes or get like different echoes, right? That could help us expand our echo pool, right? So make it, for example, making it easier to get like 4 free free one one on uh, the lightning set, something like that, right? Because um, currently right now, I do actually have the numbers. Uh, let me tell you. So... For the lightning set to get 43311, one, right? You need the purple bird and the flautist. Those are the only two uh, electro damage echoes, right? So that's fine. There's a couple of different elemental sets that have that. But the issue is on this current map, on this current map, there's only 17 flautists and 17 purple birds. Like, what are you supposed to do about that? Like, uh, like farming frequency is just bad but hopefully by the time they expand the map it's going to become a lot easier and a lot more like manageable or something like that so that's fine uh, there's that um, but yeah, it's not finished and it kind of sucks because it just feels bad man. like this game is so good but it's just like Let's just say, when another game comes out, Zenless Zone Zero, and Azure Promilia, and probably even um, Ark Knights Enfield, when those come out, I can 110% like, okay, maybe, I, I, again, I don't know this exactly, but I'm pretty sure they're going to have a better release than what the Waves did. Um, because Azure Promilia has Azure Lane, so they have money. Uh, Enfield has Ark Knights, so they have money. And Zelda Zone Zero is Hoivers, so they have Honkasara and Genshin, so they definitely have money. 
So they're going to come up with a finished product. Now, the thing that's going to happen then is just going to be based on the quality of that product. But the thing is, Water and Waves doesn't have a finished product to provide. So we're kind of like, yeah, the game feels good. It's perfect. It's all this, all that. But like, it's not here yet. Uh, that's what I feel anyway. It's just like, I don't know, man. It's, it just kind of feels bad. Um, but yeah. In conclusion, they need to release, announce the 1.1 last stream already and give us some good news because it ain't looking good. Pe people are like threatening to quit if they don't fix mobile performance. People are threatening to quit if um, um, if what if PC performance is not better. Um, you know, people are threatening to quit because they feel like this game is gonna be worse than uh, Hoyoverse. So it's kind of like a placeholder or like the Zelda Zone Zero waiting room, right? Uh, which is pretty funny, but. In some cases, in some aspects, it may be true. I am I'm not gonna lie. And to be honest, now that I finished the game and you know explored all the map, I have that pressure lifted on my shoulders, right? Because I already spent the time in the game. So now for me this game is just like a day by day grind. You know, like go log in 10 minutes, 15 minutes, do the dailies, do the farming, and that's about it. But I just don't feel satisfied. I feel like I've played this game for not long enough to reach this point. I don't know. It's weird. I know it's 1.0. You're not supposed to have everything yet. Um, but it's weird. And that's because a combination of exploration being really fast, uh, you know, getting golden echoes instantly, and then, you know, running out of premium tuners and echo XP. Because no other gacha gives you this, gives you access to the best in slot, you know, artifacts, uh, relics, whatever you want to call it, right? Echoes. None of them do that. This is the only game that does that, which is unique, but it's bad. <laughs> it just, well, it's not bad, but it just feels bad because you're not supposed to have those resources yet, but you can have, you know, have the best in slot things, but it's only if you get really lucky or spend a shit ton of money. So there you go. But yeah, it just feels bad, man. Uh, hopefully 1.1 goes crazy. And yes, currently, uh, this is kind of like the whole meme that I had prepared for this. Currently, this game is keeping me in it right now because of like two or three things right now so <laughs> so this is one and this is two and this is three so that's that's unfortunate but yes um yeah they this is like the only thing that they've done good in my opinion other than like combat right is that the characters are you know Bought, and from what I've seen, you know, uh, accidental spoiling, I suppose, uh, they're really, really sick to play. But yes, Yenlin Rover, you know, they're hot, they're all that, they're not, you know, they're something that other games don't provide currently, right? So, that's pretty cool. In this, like, open world aspect, right? Because there is Genshin, but Genshin... These characters don't look anything like Genshin characters. Like Genshin characters look like, like I don't know, like Play-Doh type shit. I don't know. It's weird. But yes, yes, the characters look really good. And if they release some skins for the summer, that's gonna go crazy. Yeah, name. But yes, I hate gaming in 2024, man. Like there's so many good games, but they're all just like bad. <laughs> in some way or another, I don't know. But yes, I mean, we'll just have to see, right? But I'm lucky because I'm playing a bunch of catches. So I'm not like, for example, like Mtash, right? Which just no life's watering waves. I do play other gachas, so I have... Now that I've finished watering waves, you know, exploring, doing all of that, playing day by day, 20 minutes. Now, you know, Honker Style 2.3 is going to come up. So I'm going to go play that. So I'm not going to have time to play watering waves. Um, you know, Nikki is having updates. Uh, AFK Journey is having some massive updates, which are sick. Go, uh, AFK Journey is such a sick game. Um, you know, Hawkeye Star is having, you know, probably the biggest update so far. Um, you know, with Firefly and Run Me coming, coming, that's gonna go crazy, and also the story and all that. But yes, that's fine. They, especially on the inside, they need to polish the game, let the voice actors do whatever they want, give them the context, all of that. You know, because they've, voice actors have, like, silently, like, spoken out, I suppose, to how, what they had to do, right? Um... Which wasn't fair. They had like one or two takes. They didn't have context. They didn't have all this, all that. But to be honest, I don't care. It's if the voice is bad. I don't really care why it happened. I all I know is that it's bad. 
So, you know, you tell me like, oh yeah, this is what happened, you know, blah, blah, I should feel sorry for you. No, it's just bad. Like, just fix it or do something. I don't know. But yes. And they missed out on a big opportunity. Right, if they let Yin Lin do her British mommy voice that she done in Reverse 1999. Holy, that would have gone crazy. But they didn't. They had to force an American accent, which was kind of mid. Uh, to be honest, I'm not, I was excited for Yin Lin's voice when it came out, you know, she sounds all of that. But she doesn't like sound, her voice doesn't like match with how she looks. Like she doesn't sound sexy enough, I don't know, it's weird. But yeah, anyway, it's just like nitpicking at this point. But yes, they need to let the voice actors do whatever they want. And give them the context. And then the voice acting will be good. Because, you know, the people that they are, that the people that are voice acting, they're good voice actors. It's just like, they were just kind of like cocked, basically, of like performing well. Which I mean, again. You know, with context, you know, oh, Wonder Woman doesn't have any money, they didn't have this, they didn't have that, they didn't blah, blah, blah. Okay. Again, context doesn't matter. What matters is the final product, and it's not good. So there you go. Uh, but yes, this isn't just like a Doom posting thing. This is a, like, the game is good, but it has issues type of thing. Uh, and they need to fix it. So this is just me, like, pointing out those issues, and hopefully, you know, my voice may not be heard, because I have zero viewers, but, I mean, pretty cool. Uh, if it does, you know, hopefully some of the things I'm saying, you know, resonate with the community and maybe Wonder Woman hears that and they fix it. But yes, man, if Chang Li's voice isn't going to be good, I'm going to be so sad. I'm so excited for Chang Li, man. Her tits are so huge, it's crazy. <laughs> uh, but yes, I'll leave it there. Let me know your thoughts in the comments and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.